politics today is hard to talk about because we are more divided as a country than we have been in probably a hundred years. When you want to engage in a political conversation with somebody who you know is going to have some really different views than you are, there's four things that you can try. The first is to listen for understanding rather than advantage. You're not going to be listening in a way to try to chip somebody up or show that you've got a better position or point out how they're wrong and get on the other side of that a useful conversation. But if you listen for understanding rather than advantage, it's going to help you to create a common space where you can explore areas where you really are differing in things that are important and maybe some areas of common ground that you weren't seeing. A second tactic is hunting for the common ground. 2016 election, the lines were drawn so starkly in politics. Uh, red states went for Trump, blue states went for Clinton. But when we look below the level to counties, we see the shades of purple. Sometimes there's common ground where you don't expect. Democrats and Republicans disagree about a lot of things, but if you take it down to the really abstract level of do you value freedom, do you value opportunity, do you value equality, you'll probably find that most Democrats and most Republicans will think all three of those things are important. But where some of the differences that we get to politically might arise from is the different orders that those values are ranked. So Republicans might value freedom as more important, where Democrats might value equality as more important. And what we see at the surface level is just the manifestation of those being the primary values that are driving the conversation. So the third thing you can do in a political conversation is what I call get to the third why. If you get to the question why three times in a row, and each time is a clarifying question on what the other person is talking about, you're probably gonna land at a place that is different than where you started and more productive for assessing how you really are differing uh, politically and, and where there's some lines of common ground to explore. So if somebody makes some bold rash statement uh, torn from the headlines of your favorite um, oppositional news source, you might ask, well, why do, you, why do you believe that? Why did you say that? What leads you to be concerned about that? And then you listen very carefully to what's going on in the answer and you ask them another why about something that you're hearing in that. And then they give an answer and clarification to your question. And you ask a third time, well, why is it that you believe X? Or why did you just say that as opposed to something else? And when you get to that third answer, you're probably gonna get to a space that's really different than where you started. It's a space where you're deeper, you're talking about concrete things, and you're getting down to some of the core issues that clarify where we might really be disagreeing in a serious way and, and where we might actually have some common ground to explore. The fourth thing you can do is take it local. Most of the issues that divide us between Republicans and Democrats at any rate are national level issues. We can take it down to the local level and talk about the condition of the city streets or how the mayor is doing or how the schools are doing in terms of the things that we care about, then we can get into a realm of politics that our opponent may not have thought about very much and may not have lined up with prevailing party positions, whatever those might be at the national level. That creates space for dialogue and understanding. Questions can be asked. The, the trick is though, you've got to know something about at least one local issue in order to use this. Take it local and you're gonna probably find that you're in a space that the person hasn't thought of about as much before. And that's gonna create the opportunity to see where some common ground might be found. If you're able to engage in a political conversation with somebody who thinks really differently than you do, there are two big benefits that you can get. The first is you're gonna be able to get to the place where you can learn about what's really dividing you from the person you're speaking with. You have to get past the headlines and the barbs to get down to the root level differences before you can understand where that is. And if you get to that place, you might be able to spot some areas of common ground that you can explore together as a way to move the conversation forward onto more productive ground. The second thing that you're gonna get out of a conversation like this is to have some practice at explaining yourself in a way that somebody who doesn't share your values and assumptions might be able to come away with a sense of, oh, okay, that's why they're saying what they're saying. And if you can sharpen the way that you're presenting your own political views, the next time around, you're gonna have an easier time of engaging in a conversation that is gonna get more quickly to a place of really productive discussion as opposed to just um, exchanging insults and moving away.